everybody. Hi. <laughs> I'm very, very lucky to have Zim with me today and I couldn't have him all for myself. I have to share him with you because that's just not fair to keep Zim to yourself. And I'm and this guy is one of my heroes. Um he's a food sovereignty activist in South Africa and I, let me tell you quickly how I met Zim. I met Zim this year, 2015, um, at the march against Monsanto. We were so lucky to have him come down and speak at the march. And um, he travelled all night from Joburg, hadn't slept, arrived at the march starving and tired. And he was just so bubbly and so... Um, in inspiring and he spoke and he had so much spirit and guts and from then on he was one of my heroes so Zim hello tell me about I want to hear about when you got into food yes. sovereignty and why it is so important to you and where it started yes um, without going a long time ago I uh, was involved in food a long time ago, even the time I was growing up. As I was growing up, I saw many, many challenges around the people that are living within the communities. The challenges like people seeing them going back to a bed hungry, uh, even the women skipping the meals in order to have the food for the supper. Mm. Even other parents sacrifice their own food for their children so that their children they can hold, go to school with food mm. and then this thing was this something that was always hurting me inside because of not seeing people to not have enough food or access enough access to food mm. so then we decided to create a space a space that gonna make our people feel that they can they can have a say about the food challenges they are facing we managed to look on the kind of food that is eaten about people because we also educate them about the food security what are the dangers of using the food that has been spray sprayed by the chemicals and all the stuff the group of few guys and ladies who are conscious about food um, and those guys and me we manage to go around the communities of Jobek. Just imagine, we didn't know anyone there. We go to the people, we see themselves that they are starting to grow the gardens for themselves in their backyards. And then we call them, we ask them different stories, questions, and they tell us that they are proud of what they are doing mm -hmm. because they are not paying for the food they are always harvesting in their backyards. Mm. So we wanted that thing to popularize it in order to end hunger through food sovereignty. There is a lot of hunger in South Africa. Most mm. of the people in South Africa are under the bread line mm. um, and are starving, going 40, to bed hungry. 40 million out of South Africa who are going every day in bed 40 hungry. million people? 40 million, yes. How many people are in South Africa in total? We have a 46 uh, million. 46, 46 million? Out of the 46 million, 40 people. million go to bed hungry. There is enough food. Enough food. There is a big problem that we're having mm. here. And um, another challenging thing that uh, it seems as if our government is keep on ignoring all these people that uh, have trusted them to go and represent and have a say about their challenges on the ground. But our government is always avoiding the people mm. who have a critical thinking. Yeah. Our government is only interested to the people who are smarter enough to operate the machines for these cooperate uh, cooperate businesses that are coming to invest in the country. Uh, the government is just generating profit for the investors. Yeah. So they're not interested in people with critical thinking mm. because they don't want to answer questions. They just need a workforce. Yes. That's what you're saying. Exactly. They're just wanting a workforce. People that that ask too many questions create problems because yes. they've got to change things. So Zoom is a voice. Zim is, and the food sovereignty movement yes. are a voice for the people that are on the ground. On the ground, yes. Because they know what's happening on the ground and they know how people feel. Yes, and they yes. know what people need. So they go into the communities, the communities yes. and speak for 
the communities. Yes. Um, I... The constitution stated clear that the people have a, must have the right to food. Yes. But the thing that is not happening. Okay, so they're not they're not getting hold of the food because mm. they don't have the money to buy the food. Exactly. When they could actually just grow the food, yes. catch their own seeds, use chop and drop, you won't chop need and drop. anything. Yes. If everybody could just grow their own food, nobody would go hungry. Yes. The people are poor, they have no jobs, they have no money, they cannot buy the food. They should be promoting people growing yes. their own food. Instead it's big agriculture that's growing food. Yes. And uh, we saw that any unused open space yeah. is the space for us to grow food for ourselves. Just imagine we are growing our own spinaches in our yes. backyard. Yes. We have our own green peppers in our backyard. Yes. They never even went to the supermarket to buy the mm. same uh, kind of food. Mm. I always harvested in my backyard. I just want to know, in the past, people did used to grow their own food. Yes. Okay. Yes. Everybody grew their own food. Everybody was okay, growing food. Okay, now in the present, big agriculture grows food. Mm. So what has happened, why did the people that were growing their food in their backyards mm. stop growing food? Is it because they moved into the cities and they had no gardens? Yes. Or it, what was the reason that it stopped? You know, to, to be honest, now we, especially now the people who are living in this 20th century, uh, we are living in the modern days that um, have the demand of the money for everyone. Yes. So most of the people, especially those areas used to grow a lot of food yeah. that used to feed the people around, yeah. especially in the Eastern Cape, yeah. they decided to migrate themselves and go to the cities in order to find jobs and work in order to send their children to school. Okay, so most of it is to try and get yes. these kids to school and university, which is too expensive. Yes. So they need to go into the city to get money. They can't trade anymore with yes. their food. Yes, so the habit of the self-reliance and taking control of food. Okay, so we've just moved into the 20th century where everyone's moving to the mm. cities and have we need to... So you're trying to get back into people's minds and mentality yes. that they do need to carry on growing their own food and yes. they have to get back into growing their own food. Yes. Because the food that's being supplied to them is genetically it's modified, genetically modified, full yes. of chemicals mm. and often too expensive. And so you're promoting that yes. in and the communities. And you know that it seems like the people they are. They have a suspicion, a suspicions, a suspicions uh, about what is causing their health in danger. Yes. Because now the people talking about the diabetes. Yes. People are talking about the high blood pressures, mm. the things that used obesity. to not be available, the obesity. You kidney. see, kidney failures and all this stuff. Autism. These people, yeah. they say. This is the first time they are experiencing these things now in this generation. And now the people, they are becoming curious. Yeah. Like, what is exactly causing this? But because of having the minority number of people who are conscious about being the environment. About, about what the they're eating. Yeah, about what they are eating. So now, ever since we created this platform, we made a call for everyone who's an environment activist. Yes to come and at, uh, attend our activist school. This is a that, food sovereignty yes, campaign. The, the activist school that is taking place three times a year. The activist school that is uh, for the people who are active and who want to, 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 to promote the environment justice, the fairness way of treating the environment, the people who, do, who want to be friendly use. Also the education because a lot of yeah. the people in the communities don't have access to yes. a lot of them don't speak English most of them don't speak English they don't have mm. computers and internet a lot of them can't read they don't have access to information especially, especially those in the rural areas they are far far they, are, the, yeah. they don't have the information at all and they're eating millipup so which is a staple yes. diet yes. which is genetically modified and sprayed with the chemicals exactly. and they don't even realize it's happening yes up until we created that platform yes. and to empower them and telling them about the dangers of the genetically modified uh, crops okay, so when you go in and you tell them that the genetically modified corn is, is, the, is what is causing this mm. they do they have an alternative are they starting to plant other things what do they eat instead it's their staple diet you engage with the government peoples about the dangers of the GMOs yeah. and uh, the dangers of why we don't want the people keep on eating this kind of food yeah. rather than having an alternative that's going to be safe for yeah. the people's health. Yeah. 
with, with, we, we, we spoke with them and we tell them straight right in their eyes yes. that we would love our government that we elected ourselves to go there and promote the permaculture. Yes. The permaculture is the permanent agriculture way that is sustainable, that is keeping the food always available. Yes. So why do you think that they are ignoring the critical thinkers? What do they have to gain? The thing is, um, the thing is, uh, as all we know, that uh, the government, everything that is doing and everything that is exporting out of our country is always doing on the purpose of making money and profit. Mula. So that gave us a clear understanding that our government is greedy yeah. and our government after that greediness is also corrupt so now we understand that it's a huge problem yes and that been to government and so far mm. they're not really listening so they're what listening. is happening is you going in and you actually wanting to approach from a another level and that's to inform people and to start them growing their own food so yeah. they don't have to rely on this you know so. our way forward yeah even um on our approach when we started to want to engage with the government people we didn't come with the intention to challenge them yeah because of we know that there's a the money and we don't have the money yeah now our focus we want to change the approach we are not there to fight with the government. True. Work we are together. there to work with the government. We want to make the government to understand yes. what is right for the people. Rate of obesity, kidney, yes. kidney damage, cancer in South Africa since um, right. they've been eating the staple diet, genetically modified corn is massive in the last 20 years. Yes. In the last 20 years. So this generation are really suffering. And unfortunately, the cancer foundation and uh, they haven't got updated studies yes, yes. but even not having those updated studies just going in to the communities and talking yes. to the people and looking around you and seeing the children that are born deformed the uh, rates that they're being born yes, deformed yes. at and the rate of the sickness it, 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 um, is obvious